Welcome everybody, this is episode 4 of our Material UI content, and I have a lot of stuff I want to cover in this video and the next. So what I want to do is show what I want the application to look like by the end of the next two episodes, and then we'll take a look at what we have and see what we need to change. This will just put into context all the different things that we're going to be doing in the next couple episodes. Are you looking for a file uploader that works well with React? FileStack covers everything from simple file uploading to image transformations. Check them out, I'll leave a link in the description. So this is what I want our site to look like. Our customers are in this nice list, and we have these menu options, and you can see some light highlighting on the active page. Now, I will admit, this content here is still hard-coded data, but there's still a lot of improvements. Specifically, we have an active link. We now have headers for what page we are visiting. We're using a grid to nicely space out our customers. And as we navigate from page to page with these new links we've created, we are not getting a page refresh. So we have a nice single page application. So what we'll do in this video is focus on this outer structure, setting up these pages with the links and the active link, as well as the header, how we can customize that for whatever page we are on, all done dynamically. So if we were actually visiting a different URL, this would show up as a different value. And then in the next video, we will worry about displaying the customers like so. Now taking a look at what we currently have. Oh, it's not looking too hot. So let's start with the basics. Let's get rid of any of these extra links here, which currently actually aren't even links. So we'll talk about how we can do that. And you might notice some confusion with the different pages because everything says dashboard. So if you visit the home page, it still says dashboard. Well, if you really think about it, it seems like this might be the real dashboard and this is in the index file. So what I wanna do is I wanna do some file renaming before we go into these different links. So going into our files, we have the dashboard and inside of here we have props.children so all of this code surrounds the children this would be more appropriately named something like theme or you know something like the header something that describes a general structure around our site and that thing it might be surrounding could be the dashboard so let's go ahead and rename this dashboard to theme update imports yes this is going to have a now changed file here where we changed the theme. Now we've kept the name for the import since it is a default export. You can say default export here, which means we can name it anything we want. So we only had to change that import and everything should work exactly the same way. You can see the site still looks the same, but if you want, you can go ahead and update those references throughout your code. So this would now be theme and theme. And this would just make more sense for clarity of our code. And similarly, inside of the theme component, we will say export default function theme. So that's just some improvements in the actual code. And now I want to talk about how we can get rid of or modify these items over here. So these are all going to be inside of the list items. And this is something called main list items, which is assigned some JSX. Now this is not a component, so we're not exporting a function we're exporting a const, which is assigned a React fragment, which by the way, the new way of doing that is to just have this. Similarly down here, we don't need to type out react.fragment. So this here is the secondary list, and then we have the main list items. What I wanna do is actually bring these list items over into our theme which will allow us to just abandon this file here. And that's because we're going to end up using a hook, which we will want to put inside of a component. And this really isn't that complicated, so I figured, eh, might as well. So what we'll do is we will take these first three list items, and you can see where this ends here after list item button. So we will push the rest of that down, and then I'm going to take this entire section. We'll just leave that fragment We'll cut it and then let's go over to our theme file. We will go to where we have list items being used. Here is main list items. We will replace this code here with the code we just copied. Do a quick save, it'll format it nicely. We will remove the secondary list items since we don't have a need for them right now. If you had many links, then you could leave those in. Now all we need to do is do some imports. So we can say add import from MUI dash material, 
or you can do it with the slash option, so slash list item button, which is the suggested way for material UI. Same thing for the icon, so from list item icon, and then the dashboard icon, which actually doesn't appear to give a suggestion. Let's try list item text, and we'll go back and fix the dashboard icon in a second. So list item text, and same thing for the shopping cart icon as well, and the people icon. So the easy way to do this might be just to copy the imports over from list items. So we need these three here. So I'll take those and go to the top of our theme file and paste those in here. That'll get rid of all of our problems. And now we can go back to the code we just were at. This shouldn't change a whole lot on the site except removing a few of the extra list items. So now we just have dashboard, orders, and customers. I'll most likely be using orders later. So what I'm going to do is keep it, but I'm going to comment it out. So we want to comment out this list item button, which surrounds this whole thing. So what we can do is we can open a code block and then add a comment in here, multi-line comment, like so. That'll allow us to keep that code there nicely when we decide to add it back in. Or you could just delete it and then copy and modify the code as you need. But this way I won't have to remember what icons we use and all of that. Now let's figure out how to make these links. Now if you're familiar with React, you've probably used the link component from React Router DOM. I'm inside of Next.js. You could use just the React Router DOM link if you wish and you're following along with React.js. With Next.js, I'm going to use the Next.js version of Link, which is just slightly different. The main difference is instead of having a to property, we're going to have an href property. And you have to be very careful with the import here because Material UI also has a link. As you can see here, if I just started typing Link, it would default to this one. Uh oh, that's not what we want. So what we will do is let's go before all this Material stuff has a way of polluting the entire page, but whatever. Import link, and this will come from next. And then slash link. Now let's go ahead and add a link to these list items. I've heard the recommended way of doing this is to add a component property to the list item, and then we'll say link, and then we can add an href here, which this is going to be the home page, so I will just use a slash. And this may work for some scenarios that you are in. However, when I do it this way, I get an error saying multiple children were passed to link. And I was unable to fix this problem, not entirely sure what it's talking about. Even if I deleted one of these children inside of this list item button, it still wasn't working. So I was like, ah, forget it. I'm gonna do it this other way, which is to surround this with a link and define the href here, and then take the closing tag and move it after the list item button, and then remove all these properties here. So if somebody knows the correct way of doing that, definitely let me know, but this seems to work for me. So now we should be able to hit the dashboard, and let's go to a different page first. Let's go to customers, and now when we click dashboard, it takes us to localhost 3000 with no added path. Oh, you know what? I think I might have just figured it out. If we changed the imported link to the material UI version, it might work. So link from material slash link. And let's try this out. We hit dashboard and oh wow, it works. Well, now that I probably just confused the crap out of everybody watching this, I'm actually going to use the Next.js link since that's what I'm more familiar with, but you could probably do something very similar with the Material UI link. I'm not super sure of the major differences, but I'm kind of just figuring this out as I go, not gonna lie. So let's go ahead and go with the Next.js version. So I will go ahead and surround our code with that link. So first thing I'm going to change that import back to next slash link. And then we will surround the list item with a link component and take the closing tag down here, giving this an href to the root URL path. We will do something very similar for this one down here. So let's go ahead and create a link. Closing it down, actually we want this to be here. And then give this an href to slash customers. So now we should be able to navigate between these two pages. So let's check it out. 
we go to customers and then dashboard pretty cool now as for the Next.js stuff here's what's gonna happen if we go ahead and stop our terminal for a second and then say npm run dev just to restart it we'll start on localhost 3000 and then visit customers you can see a little loading tab pop up here and then the page shows up from then on it's going to be instant all right cool so i'm pretty happy so far with our progress let's talk about how we can get a reference to what page we're actually on this is going to be used for actually highlighting the correct link over here on the side and for changing the text up here this is going to require an import and this will be called use router from next slash router then we can create a const to refer to this which will be defined at the very start of our component uh, which is somewhere in here export default function theme and we will say const router is use router now we can access different properties on router that'll make our life easier. Specifically, we'll console log router and see what we have available. Visiting the page, you can see we get this here. So you have path name, which is slash customers, and that's exactly what we're going to end up using. Now as for this problem here, well, this is an unrelated problem, but it's from bad design on my part, so I'm going to fix it real quick. As you guys have probably seen throughout the series, I always screw up these key things because I change code, move code around, and then I don't update properly. So it's really easy to forget something. So in our case, we have customer, which has the key being the customer ID. However, the actual loop is not in this file, rather it is in the customer's index file where we're returning a customer component inside of a map. So the key should actually go here, not inside of that component. Oh, well, my bad. So we'll say customer dot underscore ID dot to string. That should fix the problem. And now we can actually remove this from here. And in theory, we should now be able to refresh and just get the appropriate console log. Perfect. So let's now figure out how to use this path name to highlight the active link. You can highlight very easily if we go into our code and we go into our theme. Wherever we have a list item, it has the ability to take a property which is called selected. And you can set this to true. And now you can see a very light blue tint on this dashboard here. But we're not currently on the home page. So what we want to do is we want to create a ternary to only show that if we're on that page. The structure for this is instead of just displaying true, we will say router.pathName, and if it's equal to a slash, then we will say this is the active page. Otherwise, we will say false. And this is going to be the same exact code for the other link as well. So we will copy that, go into the next list item button, and paste. But this one we want to change the path name to slash customers. So now we take a look at our site. Customers is currently highlighted. We hit dashboard, we go to a new page, and it's the one highlighted. So we got the highlighting, and it seems to work pretty nice. Now we just have to worry about this title here. Oh, also, the highlighting works when it's collapsed as well, which is nice. Okay, let's get to that title. So we can just search for dashboard, and we will find that text hard coded right here. What we can do is we can get that current path and then just do some formatting. So what we can do is we can say router dot path name, and this will display a slash customers or just a slash. So if it's just a slash, let's just display home. So that's just going to be a simple ternary. So if it's equal to a slash, then we will display home. Otherwise, we will display what the path name actually is with router dot path name. So now the home page says home and this page says slash customers. Now we can just do some formatting on this to make it look very similar to how we have home. So we will remove the slash and then capitalize that character. So dot sub string and this will allow us to pass in a one. This will basically crop off that slash. And then to actually capitalize it, I thought it'd be easy to grab the sub string here as capital and then append it to the rest of it. There's probably various ways of doing this. So we can actually put one comma two, and what this will do is it'll grab that first character after the slash. Now we can say two uppercase, and you can use two uppercase or 
to locale, upper, uppercase, either one should be fine. You can research the differences there. I'm not sure of all of the details, but this should give us a capital C. So now we can just take customers and append it to it. So plus router dot path name dot substring starting at index two and that should be good. There we go, we got customers. So this is a pretty intense episode. We had a lot going on, but now it seems to be working 